Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. I hope that you guys are having a good day, a um, good virtual day at home, getting lots of work done. Um, I have a story to read to you guys. Sorry it's so late today. I had some dentist appointments for my daughters this morning, so um, that's why I'm getting your story to you a little bit later today. But um, I chose another book from our library. So this is one that you might see sitting around when you come to the library on your library day. And since it's so cold outside, I chose another cold weather day. This is called the mitten and you can tell it's cold because there's snowflakes um, around and she's wearing, or this little boy is wearing his big winter coat and he's got gloves and he's got a scarf and his boots. Um, so this story is called the mitten and um, we have a couple of these in the library. One is by one of my favorite authors named Jan Brett. And this one is a little bit different. It's the same story, but it's more of a traditional tale, which means that it is a story that's been passed down um, from generation to generation, from grandfathers to grandchildren, and then on to their children. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and you can kind of tell that if you look at the pictures and see, um, listen as we go through the story. It's kind of different from maybe the Jan Brett version if you've heard that one. So um, I've also got some story pieces. I always like to do an activity with my stories and I've got some story pieces that I'm going to use as we tell the story to kind of retell it. Um, same thing I say every time I do one of these. If this is something that you would like to do or you'd like to draw, you can um, also draw all of the characters from the story and you can kind of do the same thing that I'm going to do, which is use your drawings to retell the story, which is kind of fun sometimes. Um, along with this story that I'm going to post to make available to your teachers today so they can put it in your library page, I'm also going to put the name of a website and the link to a website. That is what, what I use to draw a couple of my animals. So if you like to draw, or if you wanna do this activity where you can draw the different animals and retell the story, if you go to this website, it will um, have tutorials on how to draw different animals step by step, which is kind of fun. It's also got a bunch of other activities too, but it does have the drawing. So animals and flowers and some things like that. So keep that in mind if you would like to go visit that to help you draw some of your animals if you decide to retell it with the, the drawings. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the mitten. This is written by Alvin Trissot, and the illustrations are by someone named Yaroslava. Remember I told you guys that this is um, more of a traditional story, which means that it's been passed down for generations and generations. Well, if you look in the beginning of the story, it actually says that this is an old Ukrainian folktale. So in the country of Ukraine is where the story came from. And this is called The Mitten. It was the coldest day of the winter, kind of like today, right? It's so cold outside. And a little boy was trudging through the forest, gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all you can find, the old woman had said, as she sat knitting a pair of mittens. The north wind blows cold, and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. So they're going to build a big fire to keep him warm, so he's got to get some firewood. All morning the boy worked, picking up sticks until his sled was well loaded. Then a very strange thing happened. Just as he picked up the last stick, he dropped one of his mittens in the snow. Now how a boy could do this on the coldest day of winter, I'll never know, but that's the way my grandfather tells the story. Off he went with his load of wood, and the mitten was left lying in the snow. So he dropped his mitten and he left it lying in the snow. Let's see, oh, there he goes. As soon as he was out of sight, a little mouse came scurrying through the woods. She was very cold, and when she spied the little boy's mitten with its feathery fur cuff, she popped right in to get warm. It was just the right size for a tiny mouse. So our little mouse is gonna come along and pop inside the mitten. What do you guys think? Does she look pretty warm? <laughs> Presently, a green frog came hip-hopping over the snow. Anybody home, she asked when she saw the mitten. 
Only me, said the mouse, and come in quickly before you freeze. There's our frog. Let's see, let's get our mitten. So she, the mouse invited the frog in. So he's going to jump into the mitten also. They had no sooner settled themselves snugly in the red wool lining when an owl flew down. May I join you in that lovely mitten, he asked. If you mind your manners, replied the mouse, for owls don't, uh, owls always made her nervous. And don't wiggle around too much, added the frog, because it's a bit tight in here. You see all the animals getting into the mitten? Oh, I'm gonna add our owl to our mitten, so it's gonna get kind of tight. You guys think, does it look kind of crowded in there? <laughs> It wasn't long before a rabbit came down the forest path. Is there room for me in that nice warm mitten? Asked the rabbit. It's awfully cold out here. Not much space less left, said the mouse and the frog and the owl. But come in, we'll see what we can do. So got our mitten. My mitten's a little bit too small, isn't it? I'm put the rabbit on top of the mouse. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself tucked in, a fox trotted up to the mitten. And after a good deal of trouble, she got herself in along with the others. The mouse was beginning to think maybe she shouldn't have been so generous. But with the bitter wind outside, what else could she do? Oh, let's see. Where's our fox? Here's our fox. Gonna add our fox to the mitten. And now, as if things weren't bad enough, the next visitor was a big gray wolf who wanted to come in too. I don't know how we'll manage it, said the mouse, but we'll try. Everyone moved around a bit and finally the wolf was squeezed into the mitten. It was very crowded by now, but at least it was warm. What do you guys think? Does it look pretty crowded? <laughs> Looks pretty squished to me. Things had just gotten arranged nicely when the animals heard a great snorting. It was a wild boar, and he was very anxious to get in out of the wind. Oh dear, cried the mouse for the mitten was already beginning to stretch a little. We just don't have any more room. I'll be very careful, said the boar. With that, he squinched himself into the mitten along with the mouse and the frog, the owl, the rabbit, the fox, and the wolf. I know this is so because my grandfather told me. All right, oh my goodness. You can't even see the mitten anymore. It's so squished in there, look. Oh. There it is. Oh, what is that? The frog found him a little window. Huh, look at that. That's funny. Oh, he's peeking out the window. But the worst was yet to come for who should appear now but a bear. He was very big and very cold. No room, no room, cried the animals even before the bear had a chance to speak. Oh my goodness. Do you guys really think that bear is gonna fit in there? I don't know, let's see before we add him to our mitten if he really fits in there. Oh, nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And without so much as a please or thank you, he began crawling into the mitten. He put his paw in first and the mitten creaked and groaned. He put his other paw in and one of the seams popped. Then he took a big breath and pushed himself in. Oh my goodness, look at the frog. He fell in through his window. <laughs> oh my goodness, and look, do you guys see? That looks like the fox's tail is sticking out. And I'm not sure whose tail that is. Somebody's tail sticking out there. Do you guys think you can figure out whose tail that looks like? I don't know. And there's, oh, let's see. Oh, there's the owl. Look, I don't know if you guys can see him. He looks pretty worried, doesn't he? <laughs> doesn't look too happy. Oh, and let's see. Is this the mouse up here? She's already popped out, I guess. 
Oh my goodness, that crazy bear. He's gonna try though, so I guess we should try to put him in our... Oh my goodness, look, he takes up the, the whole mitten. I think he's bigger than the mitten, isn't he? Oh my goodness, let's see if he was able to get in there. Now, while all of this was going on, along came a little black cricket. Let's see my little black cricket. Oh, and Mrs. Johnson drew my little black cricket, so she's pretty good. So it looks it looks like a, a good cricket. You see my little cricket? She was very old and her creaky legs ached with the cold. When she saw the mitten, she said to herself, now that looks like a nice warm place. I'll just hop over and see if I can squeeze in too. You can see the little cricket. What do you guys think? Do you think she's gonna fit? She's gonna try, let's see. Oh, did you guys see the mitten? Let me show you. Looks like somehow, I have no idea how, that bear must have got in there because I don't see him anywhere. <laughs> but, ah me, that's all that was needed to finish off the poor old mitten. The cricket had no more than put her first scratchy foot inside when, with a rip and a snap, the stitches came apart, the old leather cracked, and the soft red lining split in half popping all the animals into the snow. So that was too much, that one tiny little cricket. Well, at this very moment, the little boy discovered that he had only one mitten. But all, he, so back he went to see where he might have dropped the other one. But all he could find were the ripped part pieces. And he thought he saw a little mouse scurrying away with a bit of red wool perched on her head. It looked very much like the lining from the thumb of his missing mitten. Oh well, said the boy as he snuggled his cold hand inside his coat. My grandmother will surely have my new mittens finished by now. Then he hurried home with the north wind nipping at his cheeks. See, you see it? Oh, there's some pieces of it. <laughs> And my grandma, my grandfather says he never did know what really happened to his mitten. Hmm. We know, don't we? All right. So that is the end of the mitten. Um, if you'd like to check this book out from the library, it will be sitting up on your next library day. So it's available for you guys to check out if you enjoyed it. And I will also post that website that will help you draw some of the animals if you want to um, do the activity that goes with it where you can put all the animals in the mitten. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I will see you on your next library day. Bye.